What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are doing the much awaited, much hyped, much anticipated video that I have been talking about doing for a while, but I wanted to get it right. It is how I stopped picking my face, and this is just going to be a chatty video. I made a lot of notes so that I could try and make sure that I get everything out in this video because this is such an insanely important topic for me. When I made some changes, I don't know, middle of this year or so, and just decided that I was fed up with my constantly broken out, constantly inflamed skin, I did make a lot of adjustments and we're going to kind of go through a few of those, but the biggest one by far, by far, and honestly the one that everything hinges on was to finally buckle down and stop picking my face because it is something that brought me so much shame and I'm, I'm already getting emotional. I, I look at pictures of myself after I have picked and I am so ashamed of what I did to myself, what I used to do to myself. And we're going to talk about that shame. We're going to talk about how that's not healthy either. <laughs> but that these kinds of pictures are really helpful still for me as kind of a mental visual aid to help me stay on track. So uh, we're going to kind of go, I think, in, in what I tried to make a kind of intuitive order. But I have watched a few of these kinds of videos in the past and they've really, really helped me. So hopefully these tips, if you are a chronic picker like I was and how I am prone to being, then hopefully this will help you as well. So the only way that I could properly do this video was to not wear any makeup. I mean, I put on some brow mousse <laughs> because I'm still me, but, uh, but I'm not wearing any face makeup. All I have on is skincare right now. And so you can see I've got a little bit of scarring and I've got a little bit of kind of leftover breakouts and whatnot. And that's just because of life. I will sometimes have too much sugar or hormones take over or what have you. This isn't a video about how to not break out as much as it is a video of how to handle it when you are breaking out. And so I hope that that's actually more helpful. I do have other videos on my channel of how I cleared my skin, how I healed my skin, but this is not that kind of video. If you are someone who is still kind of chronically breaking out, this is how to not indulge in picking your face. Anyway, so I want to start by saying my process and how I start picking because when I pick, it might be different from how you start. So it will be when I'm taking my makeup off at the end of the day, I'm washing my face and I just have this habit of then leaning really close to the mirror. It is years, decades really, of conditioning that I have created this habit for myself where I just, I'll be washing my face and I start to kind of hunt. I call it hunting, I've heard it called scanning too. And it's where with your fingertips while you're emulsifying something on your face or applying a serum or something, you feel something and all of the alarms go off in your brain because if you're a picker, you know, you don't think of a pimple as a problem as much as you think of it as an opportunity. <laughs> and it's an opportunity to get this satisfaction of getting this thing off of your face or it's the satisfaction of like fixing something. Either way, something triggers in our brains where we're like, oh, I can fix this. And so I tend to hunt, 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 and then I get really close to the mirror and I look. And that, I know, is the only time that I can stop myself because if I let it go further than that, my brain just checks out. I go into like this weird, like dazed state where I am just like this close to the mirror, looking at all of my pores, analyzing what I can pop, what I can mash, trying, just trying. And not everybody's like this, but my skin gets red if you like think about touching it. It's just so easy to make my skin look irritated, as you can tell. I always have an itch right here, and so I always have like a red spot right there. I don't know why. So yeah, all I have to do is like scratch a spot. It doesn't even have to be picking, and my skin will get red. And so I have to <laughs> catch myself when I'm getting really close to the mirror and go, don't. Because one of the biggest things that I had to finally understand about pimples at age 31 is that if you leave them alone and you, you treat them, but you don't pop them, 
they will go away. I don't know why it took me so long to understand this because I always thought that if it was a pimple on my face, like if it had a white head on it or if it was very clearly something that could be popped, that if I left it alone, it would actually go away on its own. Like I always thought that this thing is going to sit here until I do something about it and it's just not true. And I'm going to share with you guys some of my quick tips and my products that I really, really swear by at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But I encourage you guys, if you are going to pursue this as something that you want to solve in your life, take pictures. It was such a persistent issue in my life. It was just like every single night that those pictures now serve as a really great reminder of A, how far I've come and B, what hangs in the balance, like what the stakes actually are because it is easy to forget that sometimes and sometimes, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but sometimes you will fail and you see those kinds of things start to happen again. If you have that mental image of what it looks like when you really let yourself go, it can help you pump the brakes even if you've already started picking. So I kind of want to get into the philosophy of picking. It is a compulsion. I'm not sure it's necessarily an addiction, but it's definitely a compulsion. For me, it takes over in a way that, like I said, my brain kind of checks out. And so when I start picking, it could be for good reasons, like I think that I'm solving for something, or it can be because I'm having a bad day or negative emotions. But the main thing about the philosophy of it, because I've heard it actually compared to dermatillomania, it is kind of a form of dermatillomania where you just can't have these things sitting in your skin and it's you have to like, you have to do something about it. In your brain, it is a compulsion and you have to do something about it, much like Trich, where people feel compelled to pull their hair out. It's really hard to explain. And I don't necessarily think that it is something that we need to explain as much as it is something that we just have to catch our own triggers for because it's very, very personal. So that is probably my next big kind of overarching tip is to understand not just what your triggers are and kind of what your body language is when you start to pick or when you are about to pick, but also the lies and excuses that you have personally formulated for yourself. That is super, super important. Personally, me, I had to overcome the idea that, well, once I've started, I might as well. It's who cares, you know, today's picking day, open season. Like that was something that I really, really had to deal with because you actually can pump the brakes. Like when you have started picking, you can stop. It was really, really hard for me to be that mindful, but it helped to kind of observe myself in that state and understand like what I'm telling myself in my head that's justifying me continuing this. And then without fail, stepping away from the mirror and looking at myself and feeling self-hatred. So no matter what you think you're solving for in the grand philosophy of this, you're gonna step away from the mirror and hate what you just did. It's never going to actually solve something. And so I had to really internalize that and do some serious self-criticism in a healthy, positive way that was like, look, Khaki, what you're doing is, is damaging. This isn't just your preferred way of handling your acne. This is something that is wrong. And it is something that is damaging you long-term. It is something where you're waking up every morning and you are ashamed of what you did the night before, like, like a hangover or something. And just knowing that every time you pop that pimple, what it's doing is actually creating an open wound. And a wound takes much longer to heal than something that does not have broken skin on it. So you can treat something with acne medication that is not broken skin, and it's not going to have as far to go, as far to travel in terms of counteracting the inflammation, because when you have popped something and it's made the open wound, you've got, you invited bacteria in, you've spread that bacteria across that spot on your face, it's swollen, you've got a bunch of kind of emergency things happening in your body that are saying wound, 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 and you've set in motion something that is so much worse than a pimple. And I'm not talking about cystic acne necessarily. Like I haven't had experience with medical 
cystic acne. I have had chronic acne my entire life, but most of it had to do with improper treatment and with picking. And so like here, I actually have two that are kind of cystic that are just like underneath the skin and are not going to like come to a head, but I have treated them. I have left them alone and they are retreating. So start to understand the ways that you think about the things on your face because that hatred that you feel starts to influence the beginning of the process, not just the end of the process. And you realize that you just start to see ugly in the mirror. And that's a cycle that we can all afford to just pluck out of our lives. Just pick it up from the roots and burn it. So what if you fail? <laughs> I don't fail, I'm perfect. No, everybody, and I, I mean, I don't wanna necessarily dismiss this because it makes it sound like this is an impossible task. This is very possible. By virtue of the fact that you can wake up in the morning and hate what you see in the mirror because of what you did the night before, you can also wake up so pumped because your skin looks awesome. That is probably the greatest reward that I have reaped from this entire process is that, oh my God, waking up to clear skin, it's euphoric. It's ultimate freedom. Being able to leave my house without makeup on, of course, I was doing it anyway, but just knowing that like I could take a selfie, I could be in a picture, it was not in my way. It wasn't between me and someone else. The fact that not only that I had zits, but that I had clearly fallen victim to popping them and picking at my face, that was eliminated and it was just the greatest feeling of freedom. And so like, yes, you can take that shame and reverse it on yourself and give yourself this amazing emotional reward of clear skin in the morning, which is incredible. It's just incredible. And it makes putting your makeup on a pleasure. I want this to be kind of the point where I'm like coaching you in the moment, right? So let's say you have actually started picking. You got close and you just took the bait. You saw it and you were like, oh, that one looks ready. It's got like a head on it and everything. By the way, if I can help you, this is like advanced, advanced non-picking because I, I honestly almost don't even want to say this because I don't want to give license. Like if you, if you are in the throes of like the worst phase of a picking cycle, like you know that you are at your worst right now and you are, you have like no mitigation for it, then I don't want to introduce the idea that there is such a thing as like responsible extraction like ignore that that's like advanced <laughs> because i'm not even really ready for that yet but there are different kinds of pimples and if something looks kind of wet and smooth on the top it ain't ready <laughs> y'all it needs to be dry 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 and then your esthetician or a very responsible human <laughs> with a very sanitized extraction tool maybe maybe okay, can you actually extract something from your face, be it a blackhead or something like that? And by the way, if you leave pimples long enough, they will just turn into a blackhead in a lot of cases, in which case they're sitting right on top of the skin. You can practically just flick them off with your finger. But in the case of like these cystic guys, there's nothing I can do about that. There's literally no logical recourse. I have to just treat it and let it go away. And you can sometimes get overwhelmed by that. You're like, oh my God, they just keep cropping up. How am I going to resist all of them? I'm gonna get to some of those tips, but if you fail, if you actually have already popped a couple and you are like almost to the effort moment where you're like, might as well just go for it, you know, open season on my face today, you're gonna feel like crap tomorrow, like when you go, oh, I've already had a drink, might as well have five more. You can stop yourself. And I, I highly encourage you to exercise some mindfulness and just give yourself some tough love and go stop. Just stop, because actually popping two zits is better than popping 18 zits on your face. Believe it or not, like you'll wake up in the morning and you'll go, yep, I pop those two and they look like crap, but at least my whole face doesn't look like crap. I don't have to spend 20 minutes covering all the zits on my face today and feeling really vulnerable all day. I just have these two that are little buggers and I, I failed and that sucks, but I'm not gonna shame myself for it. And that is kind of step two of this, this subtopic is don't shame yourself, forgive yourself for it because it is a compulsion. And we do have this like 
mental association with pimples as something that needs to be solved and something that needs to, it's wrong we need to clear it up as something that is like a problem and we can fix it and I encourage you to try and kind of shift your mindset like I said it becomes this cycle of mindlessness okay this is actually an exercise in mindfulness so the mindlessness allows the most low vibe low frequency negative feelings to be what rules your actions it allows that self-loathing shame self-hatred all those negative feelings to be the reason that you're spending you know maybe a half an hour in front of the mirror creating another cycle of shame for yourself so it becomes instead of solving something it becomes a, a, a source where you know in the beginning of it that you're gonna feel shame you're going to feel ashamed of what you're about to do and then all you're doing is reinforcing that shame checking a box to some extent saying like yep I did it I made myself feel like crap and we all do it we all have these kind of negative loops of satisfaction where it might be a negative outcome but we've at least satisfied an assumption about ourselves which is not healthy at all but humans don't make sense so the idea that you could break this cycle and begin to look at a blemish differently look at a pimple and see it as like a non thing because guess what a lot of the population really doesn't see a pimple as a thing like my husband walks around with a pimple on his face he doesn't care and I still think he's super hot and super beautiful I don't look at him and go I need to pop that pimple no it's only on myself and I see it as this huge problem this big failure this thing that only it's it's the only thing that people see like that's how I see it and the truth is if I pop it that's absolutely the case but if it's just sitting there no one cares and if you can just distance yourself from this association that is it is a problem and it makes you ugly especially because it's so counterintuitive to think that popping it is going to make it less ugly <laughs> I'm talking to myself here. You can start seeing beauty in the mirror again. <laughs> you can look at your face and its imperfections and actually have a cycle of self-love when you look in the mirror. Because A, you see the blemishes and you decide to love yourself anyway. And B, you decide not to perpetuate that cycle and you wake up in the morning to clearer skin every day, which is the ultimate reward in this case. So it actually is a cycle that you can break and create a new cycle of positivity that leads you to a place where you love yourself more and you love what you see in the mirror which is going to make you more confident even if nothing actually changes like other than the fact that you stopped picking you are still going to see yourself as more beautiful and more worthy because of the mental exercise of not perpetuating that cycle of not caving into those negative feelings and of raising your overall frequency your overall vibration to be the kind of person who appreciates what you see in the mirror instead of looking immediately for flaws like looking in the mirror and just looking for flaws because we are all subject to this I could get oh boy I can really get going on how we've all been psychologically damaged by ads ad advertising to uh, especially to women teaching us that we're broken and this product is going to fix us I really feel like all of these things are so closely intertwined um, that you really are doing yourself such an amazing favor by breaking away from that influence and by breaking away from a cycle that wasn't your decision really to begin with you have been influenced by the idea that your skin is wrong <laughs> and I will say that the only thing wrong for me is caving into that and making it worse but my skin's not wrong for having zits okay there are things I can do about them and it starts at the inside you can also have some really great things happen from the outside that can help a lot too but your skin's not inherently wrong your face is not inherently wrong and it is the advertising and the touched up pictures and airbrushed this and everything and and honestly what I've heard one of my viewers recently call Instagram drag which I thought was the greatest name for anything because it's it's that like old school YouTube Instagram way of doing makeup where we put like 18 layers of five different things and basically change our entire complexion with our makeup it's that mentality 
to me that has influenced us into thinking that there's something wrong with our faces. And this is really not where I was going to go with this video. <laughs> I've gotten on a little groove here. But that, that influence teaches us that when we wake up in the morning, we are incomplete from an appearance standpoint. And I want to buck that. I think that there are just things that we can do from the inside out. And I, I don't necessarily, that's what you eat, but that's also what you think. And those are the, the, the foods that we need to kind of nourish our minds with instead of this junk food of, I need to make my face look better and therefore I'm just gonna go essentially beat myself up in the mirror. So those are <laughs> my, my thoughts on that. I could really harp on that for a while, but I'm going to share with you guys kind of my quick tips and the products that I really, really rely on for keeping my skin clear. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> First off, um, I'm not sponsored, but uh, they have asked if they could use my face and I said no, because I don't know, I just don't want them to. But uh, Curology works. Curology works. It is a personalized, it's got your actual formulation right here is a personalized acne treatment topical. It's one product. They're not, I mean, yes, they have cleansers and they have moisturizers and things like that, but this is the, the crux of it. This is really like distilling it down to what you need. Like you don't have to buy a system and it's not a one size fits all system. So it's not, you know, we've all done the proactive thing. We've all done the, you know, go to the drugstore, buy all the clear thing and burning it down your acne is never the answer, at least for me. Now, if I've got a real doozy, I will, and I'll get into it in a second. I actually don't have it up here with me, but if I've got a real doozy, I will use the Glossier Zit Stick. It has benzoyl peroxide in it, and I can be, I'm super careful with benzoyl peroxide because it's just, I kind of want to like save my heavy artillery for really special occasions. And I did have like a really crazy like infection right here uh, earlier this year that like blew up my whole cheek. Like I'm not a stranger to weird, unpredictable acne, you guys. Like this is not like, oh, I just had a couple of zits over the course of my life and now I'm going to tell you guys how to stop picking. Like, no, my skin's crazy. It does some really crazy stuff. Like I had to go to the dermatologist twice and get this thing shot with, uh, with cortisone, hydrocortisone. Like they, it, and I had to go on two rounds of antibiotics for it. It was enormous. It like blew up my whole eye. I don't, I don't understand my face, but I want you guys to know that I'm coming from a place of experience and frustration here. So anyway, this does actually really work. I use this underneath my makeup and then I use it at night and it's, it's fantastic. It does a really good job. Mine it happens to be particularly uh, gentle. I feel like it doesn't have anything really harsh in it. And they do ask you a lot of questions when you are kind of, you know, giving them the information that they need when you take the survey online, where you tell them what you have used in the past, especially from like a chemical standpoint, and tell them like what it did to your skin. Because, you know, I've used uh, benzamycin and it just was the most painful thing in the world and burned my skin. It was awful. And so like those kinds of things are really valuable to know, to kind of understand your own skin, to help them kind of cater to you. So uh, so this has been incredibly effective for me. I've been using this for probably six months now. Y'all, if you are mid-pick, if you are mid-pick and you have stopped yourself short, you've popped like one, two, maybe three, or maybe 10, I don't know, but you need to stop and you need to stop right the crap right now, um, get, a charcoal mask. So this isn't actually my fave fave. Where's my fave fave? It's around here somewhere. So I really, here it is. I really like both of these, but I think that the Bosha is a little bit gentler. It's not so like crazy drying on my skin, but uh, this is the beauty counter balancing charcoal facial mask. And not only will a charcoal mask arrest a breakout in its tracks, you guys, because it does, also, it covers your face in a layer of perfect grayness. It makes everything look so flawless and completely covered up that guess what? It can break you of the trance. You go, oh, I'm stopping myself. I'm going to put on a charcoal mask. I do it all the time, honestly. Like if I'm about to pick or if I have gotten, gotten in there, I grab a charcoal mask and I just put it all over my whole face and walk away from the mirror because it, A, like I said, it really does help. 
but B, it gives you something to do and you can't see your skin through it. I know that that's weird, but it's kind of like when I talk about how like self tan is really good for body dysmorphia. You know what guys, sometimes you need a shortcut, okay? Sometimes you're not strong enough to like counteract all the demons that are in your head right at this moment. Sometimes it helps to have a little crutch and this is a very healthy little crutch where you can just snap yourself out of it and do something good for yourself instead of shaming yourself. And so, you know, it dries in about 15 minutes, you go wash it off, you finish your skincare, and by then, hopefully you've talked yourself off the ledge. I think that spending the money to get the right skincare and to get the right like masks or even like chemical peels or anything like that, also, it, it ups the stakes for you. It makes you, understand that you have put time, energy, money into clearing your skin and it makes it actually harder for you to pick because you're like, look, I've invested. This is something that I have really put the time, energy, and money into and I want to make sure that I get the value out of that. And so once you have washed off a charcoal mask, especially because like these two are not cheap and a lot of them are not cheap, the other one that works really, really well is the Glam Glow uh, charcoal mask. And I think it even has like tea leaves in it or something. I'm not sure, but it also works really, really well. And once you've done that, it's really hard mentally to go back in and just start picking again because you're just like, you know what? I just took a step towards something positive and I'm gonna chase that feeling. So use the time while your charcoal mask is cooking on your face to give yourself some really positive self-talk and say like, wow, you know, good on you for stopping. Good on you for doing something right and good on you for, you know, taking one more step towards breaking the cycle. So a really amazing investment that I've made in my skin is this. This is the light stim for acne. I encourage you guys to like, you know, save up your Amazon points or wait for a sale at Sephora. The full price, it's like 165. It's not cheap, but it's also not the most expensive thing in the world. I have been through a lot of different kind of zit devices. I did the high frequency one for a while and it was really cool, but this one's way better. So I'm sure that like, I don't know, back in 2014, you guys probably saw on YouTube those hilarious acne masks. They made you look like the man in the iron mask and they, they sat right on your face and blocked your vision and everything. And you were supposed to do that for like 20 minutes a day for like months on end to be able to heal your acne. Guess what gets in the way of that? I don't know, boredom? Like you can't even use your eyes? Are you kidding me? So this, I don't use around my eyes and they do give you like these little, like you go to a tanning bed or something, you know, those things. If you actually do do that, like they give you those when this, when you buy this to Jesus Christ khaki, but they do give you eye protectants when you buy this in case you do need to use it around your eyes, but I mainly break out on my chin. And so I will turn this bad boy on. In fact, let's plug her in. Can we plug her in? This has, I believe, blue and red light. Yes. So that is what it looks like. I don't, it's really bright. And I will just take it while I'm reading or watching Gilmore Girls in bed at night after I've done all my skincare and everything and I will just let that sit there. I wouldn't recommend doing it in the morning because the little lights will leave an impression on your skin <laughs> briefly, but it is a little bit weird. So uh, yeah, and it beeps in, I believe three minute increments to let you know that it's time to kind of like either cycle to the next spot or not. You cannot hurt yourself by using this. You cannot overdo it. There's no indication on it that's, you know, that there's a limitation and it's not actually hot. It doesn't feel hot on your skin. It does kind of get warm after a while, but it, it never feels hot. That thing's hella effective. It does an amazing job of healing things on your face really quickly, especially when you have picked because you know, we all have bad days. We all have bad days. So I think that that was probably one of the best investments I have made this year for my skin besides, you know, paying $250 for a chemical peel. The other thing that I have ugh, fallen in love with, guys, this is supposed to be like a, you know, like a treat mask, I guess. I use this pretty much every night. <laughs> this is the Thrive Cosmetics Overnight Sensation Brightening Sleep Mask and Carissa put so much stinking skincare in this thing that it almost doesn't fit in an infographic. Like she took all of her favorite like skin loving, anti-inflammatory, gorgeous, anti-aging, anti-acne, but gentle ingredients, no burn or anything to this. 
and she put it in one gigantic tube for $62. Like, this is crazy that this is $62 and, like, my, you know, Sunday Riley is, like, $115 for, like, you know, half this amount of product. I use this every single night. It is absolutely unbelievable for healing your skin. I have never found anything that heals my skin so beautifully overnight. It's actually crazy. <laughs> like, it's got brightening in it, it's got anti-aging in it, but I think that the main thing, and honestly, it folds really neatly into my renewed philosophy on my skin, is that there's no excoriation. There's no uh, physical exfoliant to anything that I use. I've stopped using any spinning brushes. I've stopped using the PMD. I don't think that my skin does well with being scrubbed. Everything that I use is a chemical exfoliant. If I exfoliate at all, I like acids. Um, and I, I really like where the beauty industry is going in that respect. I also really like uh, probiotic skincare. And basically the idea that my skin just needs balance and encouragement. It doesn't need me to interfere. It doesn't need me to come in with a tool, like a hammer, you know? on my skin to like make change. It just needs me to encourage it in the right directions with the right products. And so think about it, that goes hand in hand also with not picking because picking is like the ultimate disruption, right? It is literally like taking exfoliation and just going, no, I'm gonna just concentrate it in this one spot. I saw a tweet recently uh, from Samantha Ravendahl cause she's got skin issues, she's got acne issues too. And it said something to the effect of, you guys, you know, when you're breaking out or when you're picking or whatever, be gentle with yourself. Psychologically, but also physically, like the urge to scrub yourself to death or to like burn something to the ground on your face is so strong when you see something that kind of popped up that you feel like is unfair. You're like, look, I didn't get any prior notice that this was gonna happen, therefore I should be able to fix it just as quickly. Like I should be able to have something that makes this go away as quickly as I feel like it came up. So much of the time, and I'm not like victim blaming here, but a lot of the time for me at least, my breakouts come from things that I have done. A, it could be hormonal, yes. Like, I totally understand that. And then also, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but if you try and pop a pimple during your period, it won't pop. Like, your skin is just like, hi, we have claimed your body, invasion of the period body snatchers for one week, and you are not allowed to tell us anything. And so when I have a zit, even if it is a small, looks like a totally normal, like even like a blackhead or something, my skin goes, nah. Nah, during my period and like I just end up making some kind of horrible red mark and it probably gets worse under there because I've disrupted all the bacteria with my disgusting fingernails so just keep those kinds of things in mind sorry I keep wiping my nose you can see how my face gets red so easily just from like blowing my nose this is what I'm dealing with so it has a lot to do also like when I do break out with my diet with what I'm eating and also with my stress levels. So if you guys want, and I'm kind of thinking about doing this anyway, I don't have like a really strict diet. I'm not like, you know, raw vegan or like some, you know, viral like food sensation where, you know, I moved to Hawaii and only live off the land or something. I eat a very realistic human being diet, a, a human being who has celiac. And I do often share like what I cook, like delicious meals. I think I make really delicious meals like on my vlogs and stuff. But if you guys ever wanna see like a what I eat in a day for clear skin kind of thing, let me know because I do stray from it and I do pay the price, but I have definite habits that I know will produce positive results for me if I'm kind of playing by a few simple rules. So let me know that, but understand that one of the biggest fundamentals is like drinking a lot of water, making sure that your, your skin and your, this is the biggest organ you have. And so understanding that, you know, you're gonna need to kind of flush it out. Your liver can't do everything, but that water does that on its own. You don't need to go on some kind of like crazy detox plan or something in order to do that for yourself. You can just tweak your habits and improve that over time. I also, you know, advocate for moving towards cleaner beauty 
cleaner skincare, cleaner everything. That's kind of what I'm moving towards. I want to go clean in 2019. I honestly want to clean this beauty room and get rid of most of it. And, uh, and so I think that that's going to be, and, and it has shown so far to be a very positive step for my acne as well. So guys, if you have any additional questions about what I do to try and keep my skin clear and try and stop picking, leave those below. But I think more than anything, I want to hear your stories. Leave me in the comments below, leave everybody in the comments below your story. If this is something that you find challenging or that you have overcome, what's helped you, what your triggers are, what you've come to recognize as part of the stories that you tell yourself in order to justify it. Because my story is just one unique little siloed story. And I know from the feedback that I've gotten from you guys already that this is a very pervasive issue. And I want us to be able to create a community that's supportive and for all of us to be able to help each other break this cycle because I want you guys to see something that you love in the mirror. And it's not just about bringing forward physical beauty as much as it is exercises every single day in self-love over exercises of self-loathing. So if you guys enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. Guys, I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching today and for hanging out with me. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.